Good afternoon and welcome to the Maine Channel. I'm Alex Leonard. And I'm Nissa Gatcomb. Today we'll be speaking with UMaine President Kennedy and Student Government Vice Presidential Candidate Ross Woland. But first, a former UMaine student hacked into as many as 1,000 first class accounts. Police charged James Weiland with a Class C felony. Weiland attended UMaine as a business major from 2000 through last semester. IT said there's nothing they can do to prevent more Trojan horse computer invasions except to educate users. It wasn't a, a vulnerability in the mail system that we support centrally. Uh, it was a, a penetration of kind of this one-on-one -on -one trust. And uh, so as we've identified the people that have been violated, we've, uh, we've uh, uh, gone back and helped them clear their machines of, the, of this uh, Trojan horse. But we've also sent a, an email to all members uh, of the campus using the first class system. The notices were sent out on Wednesday to alert students whose accounts may have been jeopardized. Police Chief Noel March said the FBI is involved in the investigation and that Weiland is facing up to five years in prison. Police are not sure when Weiland started hacking into these accounts. Because we have reason to believe that this activity uh, preceded August of 2007, maybe by a number of years, undetected. And I think that's the, uh, the point that is uh, particularly troubling. Uh, even with our security provisions and, and firewalls in place and other systems that we constantly upgrade and implement for uh, protecting the integrity of our information. Trojan horse viruses can be avoided by not opening suspicious attachments and emails. We asked students what they thought about the first class hacking. Here's what they had to say. Um, I think it's kind of scary because like not only do we have like maybe some other threats coming in, but like people are trying to send viruses. Like are they trying to get like into music or personal files? Like you never know like what they're gonna take or he would travel around a lot. Like that last semester, like he took a couple weeks off, he went to Hawaii for a business conference. I was looking at his um, some of his pictures and he had like pictures in Rome and Italy and France. So I mean, I'm not saying that that's how he did it, because we don't, like we said, I don't know anything about the situation or what he actually got out of it, but hey, maybe he was funding his trips around the world, calling them business conferences, you know? <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy to think that could happen, you know? I think that they really need to, to step up their level of security. If, if someone's been able to get in, they need to find out through which channel they did, and, and definitely, uh, I mean, increase their, their level of security in the system. And if, if that's not possible, then they should warn people ahead of time. Stay tuned to Maine Matters for more updates on the Whalen case. Student government fired its entertainment vice president after the Dropkick Murphy show. According to student government president James Lyons, poor planning was the reason for the firing. This planning resulted in long lines to the show and to the bathrooms. Because Andrew Gerke did not program ticket scanners, none of the tickets were validated. Lions and another student entertainment worker will prepare for the OAR concert this week. The University of Maine has chosen a new outside provider for Cutler Health Center. It announced Wednesday that an Eastern Maine Medical Center branch called Norum Bega will take over Cutler's operations. Only 23% of students use Cutler, primarily because the center cannot bill outside insurance providers. The new operation will have the capability after the transition in January. You main officials say the new arrangement could save the school $1 million per year in costs. You main students honored veterans on Tuesday. Members from the Army and Navy ROTC programs took turns holding flags and rifles in a ceremony outside Foger Library. The cadets stood silently in uniform while displaying the relics and held a changing of the guard during the two-hour vigil. Today we have student government vice presidential candidate Ross Woland with us on the show. Welcome, Ross. Can you come on up here? How you doing? You want to put that microphone on for us? Thank you very much. All right, Ross, pleasure to have you here today. Pleasure to be here. All right, can you uh, just explain to the folks what your uh, platform is this year for the election? Well, it's based on three things. One, it's based on productivity. Uh, within student government, there are a lot of things that we do right, but there's a lot of things we do wrong, too. Uh, I like to think that I know what we do wrong, and I'd like to see it changed. Um, recently, I've been looking over our documents, looking over some of the things, some of our policies, uh, some, of the ways that, some of the ways we do things, and I think they can be changed for the better. Uh, so increasing productivity within student government is one of my main goals. Secondly, services. Services on campus affect the most students, obviously, uh, as part of my platform. I'm talking about the library. I'm talking about dining. Um, I've met with Kathy Kittredge uh, just recently. We're working on some things to help increase dining services, help them make it a little bit better. Uh, met with the Dean of the Libraries. Hopefully students will see a survey soon enough. 
uh, that will be asked them about their thoughts on library hours, and maybe we'll see some changes to accommodate student schedules. And other than that, experience is the third thing. Uh, I've been in student government since the, the first week I've been on campus, and uh, I think I've learned a lot. I think I've met a lot of senators who are still there. I think I know who will make good leaders. One of the jobs of vice president is to, to pick leaders within the student government, and I think I can do that pretty well. Other than that, I, uh, the vice president has to run meetings every, every Tuesday, and I've been the vice president of ROC now since last March, and I've had substantial experience uh, running those meetings as well. So hopefully things will go smoothly. Okay. Uh, now, do you think your experience um, as a senator and as a ROC president um, will help you uh, get elected this, for this term? I think so. I mean, as the vice president of ROC, I've... I put myself out there. People hopefully know me. I have office hours. People have seen me. I've worked with a lot of student organizations, both with ROC and both with student, student government. And so uh, hopefully through, those, through, through that participation, people will know my name and people will vote for me. All right. Well, thank you very much for being with us, Ross. Well, it's a nice pleasure here. evening and good luck. Stay with us for more on student government elections. Coming up, we'll tell you what you can do to change the world with an ordinary object and what you Maine students are doing to help fix climate issues and energy issues. And later we will talk with President Candy about you Maine's budget cuts in an in-studio in interview. Stay tuned, you're watching Maine Matters. students gather at the Foster Student Innovation Center on Wednesday to learn what object they will use in a global innovation tournament. About a dozen teams at UMaine are now coming up with creative ideas to use a water bottle. They must upload a video to YouTube by next Wednesday explaining how they would use their water bottle in a unique way. UMaine will hold its own award ceremony at 7 on Wednesday. Saturday, UMaine is hosting the third annual Maine State Collegiate Business Conference. Reporter Hassan Hader has more. This Saturday brings the third annual Maine State Collegiate Business Conference. Bring several speakers um, to the general public as well as the UMaine community. And what they're going to be talking about is professional development things. They're going to be telling about their experience as professionals, how they got to where they are from where we are. This year's theme is to bring tomorrow and today's choices. Focus on professional development and you need to be professional if you want to be employed in the future. This event can be beneficial to any major because it's, it focuses on professional development that any... Students will participate in presentations, workshops, and seminars presented by people from corporate businesses and state officials. Notable leaders from the business world, also government representatives. A few of the keynote speakers are human alumni from companies like L.L. Bean, Nortel, Liberty Mutual, VIA Group, and Enterprise. Uh, in agreeing with uh, Dr. Khan, I'd have to say that the uh, value of this year has gone up tremendously from last year. Um, we've definitely seen a huge improvement in team effort and... In it's going to be a, a much more valuable uh, event this year. The business conference is tomorrow in DPC from 8 to 4 p.m. Hassan Hadder reporting for Maine Matters. Thank you, Hassan. Today is Energy Action Day. The Green Team has organized a day of lectures, exhibits, and discussion on Maine's role in clean energy and conservation. The event is free to the public and will be held until 6 tonight in the Memorial Union's Bangor Room. The University's Climate Change Institute will be holding a monthly lecture at the Bangor Public Library. The first lecture took place Wednesday night with Institute Director Paul Mayowski speaking about how humans impact climate change and what actions we need to take. All lectures are free and open to the public. Astronomers had a historic week. Scientists with two studies released the first ever images of planets outside of our solar system. They found and captured four new planets, bringing the total number of planets outside the solar system to 326. Experts say most of these planets are made of gas and the new discoveries could not support life. After the break, we have President Kennedy in the studio to talk to you about his positions on UMaine's budget cuts. And later we'll tell you what's going on around campus this weekend. You're watching Maine Matters. Welcome back to Maine Matters. Staff reporter Hillary Dugas is here to interview UMaine's President Robert Kennedy. Thank you, Nissa. 
And welcome, President Kennedy. It's a pleasure to have you here. Good. It's great to be here. All right. Um, we're here to talk about Governor Baldacci's request for you mean to cut $6.5 million from its spending. Uh, could you tell us a little bit more about that? Has there been any new developments pertaining to that? Well, since the governor asked each state agency, certainly to include the University of Maine system and the University of Maine, to try to figure out how they would cut their proportional amount from the budget. We've had a lot of conversations with the faculty senate, with the administrative leadership, with the deans, with faculty and others on coming up with uh, the plan to cut that money from our budget. All right. Um, I, Governor Baldacci mentioned that there would be a budget cut sometime late October. Did you realize that it was going to be so much for um, our university? Well, we were fearful. Uh, <laughs> certainly the economic climate in the state and across the country, mm -hmm. we've uh, certainly followed that and anticipated what might come. Uh, you always hope for the best, but sort of prepare for the worst. Um, it was about the size that we anticipated because there had been uh, news leak out, I guess, about the size of the state cut mm -hmm. and what would be needed, and hence our portion of that. All right, um, and do you think that it was fair that uh, other UMaine schools haven't had as much because um, UMaine's so big? Do you think it's fair that we shouldered a lot of the budget cut expenses? Well, in a meeting with the chancellor and the other university presidents yesterday, mm -hmm. the cut to the uh, University of Maine system and then the cut to all the different campuses was proportional, exactly proportional right. to the funding they get, we all get from the state. Okay. Um, all right. Well, since we now have to have a $6.5 million budget cut, where, how do you go, go about doing that? What is the process to take us through that? Yeah. Well, first what we, we've done in cases in the past and what we're doing this time is looking at the money that's allocated to all the different units across the campus, to academic affairs, to student affairs, to athletics, and so forth, and look what proportion of state funding they get, and then we've apportioned it out to those different units uh, to the extent that they've been funded in the past. All right, well, thank you very much, and hopefully all goes well for the university. Thanks for having you here. Um, I'm Hillary Dugas, and this is your main channel. Thank you for being here, President Kennedy. When we come back, we have updates on next week's OAR concert, and we'll also look at how prepared you are for classes. This is Maine Matters. Oh, man. All the computers are full again. My paper's due in two hours. The library computers are always full. You should head up to the Media Resource Center and borrow a laptop from them for a few hours. Wait, you can do that? Where is that? I'll show you where. I've always heard of this place, I just never knew it was here. Yeah, this is the Media Resource Center. Why don't you go see if you can borrow a laptop from them? Hi, do you have any laptops available? I do. Would you like one? Yes, please. Okay, I'll need your main card. Just need to see your main card. Okay, have you borrowed a laptop before? Uh, no, I haven't. Uh, the laptops circulate for three hours at a time. They're wireless and you can go anywhere you want on campus. They just need to be back in three hours. And this one is due at 7 o'clock. All right. And just for reference, what other services do you offer here? Uh, we have digital camcorders and digital cameras. Uh, we have thousands of CDs and we have DVDs. And we have uh, a multimedia lab where you can do digital video editing. We have DVD burning. We have an audio uh, editing recording station, we have two color scanners, and we have a color HF printer. All right, thank you very much. See you again. See you I thought I could trust you. You said you weren't motivated by revenge. I'm motivated by my duty. British actor Daniel Craig is taking up the role of 007 once again. The new Bond movie, Quantum of Solace, was released today. The film begins exactly where the 2006 Casino Royale left off. Quantum of Solace is movie number 22 in the James Bond saga. Morno's Spotlight Cinemas hosted a midnight showing of the film last night. 
Tonight's crowd should be a noisy one at the Alfond. Fans who attend the women's ice hockey game are asked to clean out their kitchens and bring pots, pans, or anything else to make noise to support the team. The game is at, against UNH at 7 and is free for students with a main card. Speaking of noise, OAR is coming to UMaine on Monday, November 17th as part of their college tour. Doors will open at 7 p.m. in the Fieldhouse. Tickets are on sale at UMainTix.com. It's T-I-X and at Bull Moose stores. The tickets are $15 for students and $30 for the general public. The USA Today reports college students are getting away with coming to classes unprepared. Reporter Hassan Hader has more. Did you ever go to class unprepared and still did well? Me personally, I do go to class prepared and I read all the texts and participate in class. I um, usually end up doing pretty well for a typical English class. In colleges across the nation, students were surveyed and the results showed that one in five students go to class unprepared and still get an A. I think a lot of students do that at all. Um, just from talking to my friends and just the people that I sit around with in class, like no one ever goes over what we're supposed to be going over before we go to the class. The survey doesn't address whether those students were lazy or just flat out geniuses. It mixes. I don't always read all the readings and so on and so forth because it's a matter of time, distribution between classes. I'll never be completely prepared for class. I'll never have that much time. One may wonder whether our professors are asking us too much. The quantity of effort has been distributed away from classroom participation and, and redistributed into perhaps greater preparation for an exam. I don't really learn much from lectures. I read the book and I'm like, okay, I need to, you know, I need to know this stuff for this exam that's coming up. So I go over that and I just study it a bunch. And I learn a lot more from the book than I would from class. Hassan had a reporting for Maine Matters. Thank you, Hassan. And thank you for joining us, you Maine. For Maine Matters, I'm Nissa Gatcombe. And I'm Alex Leonard. Tune in next week for updates on the student government election and the OAR concert. A terrific weekend to you and yours, Arno.